The following program is sponsored by Capitec. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Insider SA, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to diving in as TikTok star Cassidy Nicholson's message to South Africa to laugh off the bad news becomes a 24-7 career. Life coach Songo Dukuza's story is a lesson in why it's always worth taking that leap of faith. YouTube's king of comedy, La Cizwe Dambuza, beats a breakdown to get his career and family taxi business back on the road to success. Makeup artist Rene De Witt transforms a Scarborough surf shack into a Moroccan Mediterranean vision. And champion swimmer Lara Fanikirk's double Commonwealth gold medal triumph gets a new generation diving in the deep end. In three years since Constantia Mom first dropped on TikTok, her creator Cassidy Nicholson has landed 5 million likes. And no longer is she waiting on castings to reach her audience. Over a morning swim, we met the mind behind the character. I'm a titan when it comes to swimming. I love it. Me and my friends, we go swimming all the time. All the time. Basically, just call me a mermaid. Don't. My name's Dee. Today I'm here on Clifton Fourth with my mom Danielle and my cousin Pella and we are going to go for an ice water swim. Now Cassidy has become the butt of her own joke, joining the very swimmers she parodies. I started cold water swimming by not swimming at all. I just made skits about people that did it because I think it's kind of ridiculous. But then I actually started doing it, you know, trying to immersify myself in the culture. And I just noted that it had the most incredible benefits for my mind. I just feel like I'm so much more at peace and I'm less anxious after like an ice cold water swim in the morning. When the lockdown saw all her work dry up, Miss Nicholson chose to see the funny side. I felt like everyone was so consumed in the news all the time and everything was just, oh, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. And we were just driven by fear and just being scared. So I sat and I was puzzling with my mom one day and I thought to myself, I think this is a really great opportunity to get on social media and just to make people laugh. So I took all the skills that I had and I started making comedy skits, like one minute comedy skits. I've been ripping off my mom since I came out the womb. It was just kind of a party trick of mine. I would always go out and make fun of it. The way she speaks, it's a lot. So when I started making those little skits and pretending to be my mom online, I pretended to be a character called Dorothy Spills the Tea. It's about a woman who hates skinnering and all she does is skinner. I started doing that and people were like, this is like every Constantia mom I've ever seen. I guess I started Constantia Mom in 2020, but I started ripping my mom off the moment I could speak. Cassidy's mom, Danielle Ball, has a unique view of how her daughter has immersed herself in her work. She goes through a lot of hard times. It's not easy doing what she does. I think being a creative is very difficult because you've got to switch that creative brain on and off and on and off, and that's not easy. In the mix of all the craziness, she's also trying to be very holistic and keep herself grounded. I'm not from Cape Town, so it's hard for me to understand her content. But now when I'm in Cape Town and we stay close by Constantia and the girls this morning, the, the moms who swim, I can kind of see what she's trying to do. And I can relate to her TikToks and Instagram stories. Yeah. The young Dynamo chooses to have no backup plan, as she will not allow even a small part of herself to believe that she can't achieve her dream. I do plan all of my comedy skits. I try to improv all of them, but I will go in with like an overarching objective. What do I want to take from this? What is this character's objective? What is this character's goal? My planning that I have is basically, I build character Bibles. In the character Bible, I write down their full name, where they were born, how old they are, what their favorite hobbies include. Just something that I can really get to know them so that it's so easy for me to switch in and out of characters. So you have that thing that you'll go into, but that's all in the character Bible. But other than that, I don't actually write down my skip word for word. 
I think it's very easy in this day to be making 2D skits, which are basically skits that are short-lived. People will see it, laugh at it, but won't watch it over and over and over again. But when you make a 3D skit, when you go people watching, you see the way that people walk, the way that people talk, interact with one another, make these people feel like real people, then it becomes more than entertainment. It becomes a likeness. Then people want to watch it. They want to know what they're doing next. I'm basically the new coming of Kim Kardashian. Right, so we've spent enough time on the promenade to know what types of characters spend their lives here. So today I'm going to be imitating not the gym bro, but the guy that trains the gym bros. How's it guys? My name's Brolin. I'm from Durban, but I live in Cape Town now. I actually got my gymming degree two months ago and today we have our first client. All right, come with me. No, bro, you don't do it like that. Every time you do it, you need to breathe out. Yeah. You need to think about the fact that you still live with your mom and you need to just tss, ah, make noises. Tss. Right, all right, all right, games, games. We're gonna eat chicken after this, just all the chicken. <laughs> You're right. Time to eat the gym. The perks of Miss Nicholson's success are the ones she takes with a pinch of salt, even when they are one of Mike Bassett's famous high teas. We run afternoon tea at Mori from Friday through Sunday, and it really is about creating an oasis for locals, for visitors, for our guests, where they can come and spend a few hours just relaxing and ordering teas, chilling out, and having something fantastic to eat. If anyone asks, I'm eating sandwiches. Anyway, can we go inside? I'm, I'm starving. My experience of a high tea is all that my gran has told me, which is pretty much just sit down, look nicely, and like eat well, but like sandwiches and stuff, like finger foods. That's my experience. I left a nine to five to work a 24 seven. It's really tough. People think it's so easy. I get up and I just take videos. I don't, I have to maintain an appearance. I have to maintain content all the time on all of my platforms. Otherwise my ROI, my return on investments, my engagement goes down and taking a sabbatical for my mental health, which is something that I actually have to do quite a bit can be seen as a bad thing because the moment I stop working even for like a week, then everything drops and then certain brands don't want to work with me so it's this constant nature of needing to stay relevant and so that I find the hardest but otherwise just making sure I do everything for myself is my main point of call. As the enduring comedic greats have learnt before, longevity comes down to an artist being true to their audience. The things I've learned over the duration of this content creating journey is that I need to put myself first because I can't pour from an empty cup. I need to make sure that I'm doing it for myself first because then it starts to feel like a chore and then you can actually see in the content when someone doesn't really want to do it. If it can feel like you have a new friend every minute on social media, Cassidy knows better. Something I really value are the connections I have now that I had before, that I still have. So the people that I really cherish and keep in my circle that I had before, I know that that is something that I can really value and something that I value now more than ever is quality time and good connections. Me and the Insider essay had the best time hanging out with you guys today, but we actually, we must go because Harley's finishing school and she doesn't like to wait. Jan, do you have the keys for the car? Do you have them? Did you do your little dancey dance? Okay, you do. Okay, bye. The self-proclaimed CEO of not taking life too seriously. This award-winning content creator is every bit the professional when it comes to the business of comedy. Next up, Songo Dukuza turns the tables on the tragedy of losing his mom Nolundi to become a life coach and continue her work. Sponsored by Capitec. Sponsored by Capitec. Make your magic, says life coach Songo Dukuza. And coming from him and his life experience, he makes a very good case. 
Once he began offering tips on his TikTok channel, his popularity on social media went through the roof and his message found a national audience. I was born in East London and then we relocated to Johannesburg to live, me, my father, my two brothers and my mother. Lived there for about eight years, eight to nine years and then tragically my mother passed away due to cancer. And then I went through high school feeling numb, feeling very cold inside because I didn't know how to deal with the trauma of my mother's passing. When I was in varsity, I became somebody that I didn't know. I was always in my room feeling depressed, feeling nothing at all. And once upon a time, I was out and about with people and I had a massive panic and anxiety attack. I was shaking just talking to people. When I got home after that night, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, this is not who you are. At that moment, I made the decision to start to change my life. And I started to learn the tools and pay much more close attention to my schooling because I was studying psychology at the time and use those tools for myself. And now I'm a life coach because I realize so many other people are like me. They don't know where to turn to when they're in pain. They don't know when to turn to when they want to go to that next level in life. And I want to be the person that people can look to. I want to be somebody that people can get help from. The young Songo's aunt, Sipokazi Ghazi, opened her home to him when he moved to Joburg, and he repaid her in wisdom. You almost think to yourself, he's so young, what does he know? What life has he experienced? But in the time that he stayed with me as well, I found myself relying on him. He would give me coaching advice and ways of doing things better for myself and structuring my life, which I really appreciated. If you look at the actual core and what he is saying, it is something you really can take and apply in your own life. Songo got to apply his skills in a company which assists people in getting ready for employment. And this was his big break. This place is so close to my heart because it was founded by my mother more than 13 years ago with a lady named Ayanda Mzondeki. The magic is, and after I had found my purpose and created my company named Make Your Magic, this place is the first place that gave me an opportunity to show what I can do. My job as a coach entails that I take someone from one state to another through their vision and through uncovering their purpose. And what I uniquely offer to people is the magic that they already have inside of them. Because the truth is, everybody knows that they have that thing, that calling, that fire to live a higher quality life. All I do is help you bring it all out. To Ayanda Mzondeki, it seems that while Songo's mother Nolundi Dukuza went too soon, her son is destined to fulfill her mission. I would have never imagined him to turn out the way he has. He was very quiet when he was younger. And I was quite fascinated and touched by the fact that he has taken after his mother so much. His mother is always all about how do we change people's lives. So it was quite serendipitous that this young man had his mom's spirit in him of giving, of changing lives and of growing people. My partnership with Songo works um, because he's a resilient young man. I think he's a game changer in the industry and there's an alignment to what we want to do and what we're trying to achieve as individuals. Part of Coach's approach is to evaluate your choices and make changes where needed. In his own life and business, his research told him it was time to switch to Capitech. Well, what's really attractive about Capitech is uh, its affordability, but also the ease of access that you have with its app as well as its website. You can transfer your money, you can send it to different accounts and you can see exactly what you're spending on, as well as the Live Better Rewards program where you can get your money back from the transactions that you make. Really looking forward to that one. Sign up process was super easy. All you need is a smartphone, download the banking app from your Play Store, easy, less than a minute. Then you need your ID number, your cell phone number, the works, and then you take a selfie, make sure you look good, and then boom, you're ready, they send you an SMS and you follow the instructions. I feel really good about making the change. I'm looking forward to the benefits that Capitec has to offer. I'm looking forward to growing with Capitec as a business and seeing how far we can go together. Next, to the theatre to meet a client struggling with anxiety. Gradual exposure to the environment you fear is how to overcome it. So a performance space was just what they needed. 
ever since I was a young boy, I've had a passion for the arts. I love being on stage, singing, acting, all of that. And that was something that gave me life. And there's three things that you need to focus on in life, your passion, your purpose, and your mission. I call it the top three. So my passion was the arts. My purpose is helping people bring themselves out of their shell, which is what we're gonna be doing here today with Upalesa. And then my mission in life is the business that I do. I'm a life coach and my mission is to meet as many people as possible and bring them out and awaken them to themselves and find the magic in them. What I want you to do for me, Valisa, is to imagine and see prosperity right now. Your ultimate vision. Feel it in your body. See yourself achieving all the things that you want to achieve with your family, with your business, your purpose. I was an anxious person, but now with the meditations, I have calmed down. I also wanted to find my purpose in life because I was just going around in circles, not knowing what I'm doing. But with Coach Songo's help, I was able to unleash my purpose. There's always a threshold that someone has that it's just like, Mm, I can't get past it. I'm sure you felt that in your life where you feel like you're at the edge, but you just can't get to the other side. That breakthrough moment, I love it so much because that moment energizes me so much and it reminds me of the power that I have for myself to break through my walls. Because if my clients can do it, I can keep on doing it in my life over and over and over again. Coach's latest leap of faith together with his business partner, Gift Chilwane, would be to bungee the King's Clough Bridge in Mohali City. So we've already spoken about how in life you need a vision. You need to know what you want and when you want it. But none of this matters until you make a decision to move towards your vision. And that decision requires you to take a leap and leave your old life behind and dive into newness. Because nothing happens until you make that choice. Um, I've never bungee jumped before and in this current moment, I'm nervous, I'm a little bit scared. But that's when you know you're on the right track because the things that make you feel afraid the most, especially that you know that are good, are those things that you need to do and take that decision because on the other side, it's going to be magical. With a little help from Jump Master Ernest Ndimande. Our bungee jumping is 50 meters, you know, so it's uh, less than a minute to get down there. Yeah. <laughs> no, have, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Taking the leave. Taking the leave, yeah. If he was having second thoughts, Coach wasn't showing it. I'm very excited actually for this. I was nervous before, but now I'm ready to go. Sereti si on. right. I'm feeling excited and nervous, but it's worth doing. So who's gonna go first, bro? A rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Oh, Rock, paper, scissors. I win. Okay, so that means I go first? Yes. <laughs> the psychology of courage is all well and good, but they were beyond theory now. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for it. Okay, there's no going back, eh? No going back, huh? Oh. For all his wisdom, Songo knows that to many people, you are what you do. So when it comes to taking the leap, you'll usually find him at the front of the queue. Whoa! <laughs> That's magic right there, baby! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was intense. It was fun. It was exciting, but it was intense. The pressure that you feel on your face is so crazy because it like pushes your face backwards. And then you go down. But once you find that relaxation and then you're just floating, happiness. To share that sensation, Coach aims to create an independent sanctuary where people can come to experience renewal of all kinds. So the lessons I'm taking away from this are you need to breathe whenever you're about to take a big decision in your life. Breathe, calm yourself down, and go beyond the fear. Once you take the leap, there's so much pressure that you get from the initial like, switch, the inertia that you get. That's the pressure that you're gonna find in life. Once you try to do something different, people are gonna push up against you. Life is gonna push up against you. It's not gonna be easy at first, 
but you need to push through that. And once you get through that, the third part of it is you're just floating. Everything is fun, you're laughing, it's exciting, you're free. Woo! That's it from you guys. Thank you for watching. Boom! Are you coming from the same reality as Coach Songo Dukuza? Do you see his life story lighting a way for you to live better? Then start your journey with a chance of winning a thousand rand cash prize courtesy of Capitech. Simply reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms using hashtag live better with Capitech. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Right after this, from a deep depression, comedian La Cizue Dambuza is back with life lessons learned from his cell phone. Say hello to Capitec Live Better, the best financial loyalty program of the year. Just bank with us to get real rewards, real cash back, real simple. Switch and live better with Capitec. Whether it's been launching his multimedia career on YouTube six years ago or stepping up along with his brother Lungile and Kunu to take over the family taxi business, La Cizwe Dambuza has no fear of diving into the unknown. It literally, I, I never thought I would be a taxi boss. When my dad passed on, he left it to us to, to run and it's his legacy. He literally built this from scratch. I mean, I remember how he started off. He was someone who literally was like, I'm gonna drop out of school and I'm gonna pursue this taxi industry. And years later, he's got a fleet of taxis. This business is a family business, so I would advise people not to go into business with their siblings because, girl, business and family relationships is difficult, but we make it work. We just come together and everyone has dedicated their own taxis and you just manage your own fleet and just the maintenance of the place. If La Cizwe is naturally drawn to the bright lights, then as we discovered, his brother Lungile is definitely the flip side of that. Hi, my city boy. Oh, I was gonna be so upset if you weren't here. Like, I swear I was gonna be so upset. This is Lungile, Lungile Mkhunu, my eldest brother. It's a hate-love relationship. Uh, hate-love. Yes. Like today, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven taxis, not on the road. Working with him is nice, if I may say. I think we're still on the right track. I think there yeah. is some good that we're doing. Yeah, flow, the cash flow is yeah. flowing. I am someone who's very organized. I've got like OCD and running things with like my brother, Lungile. Lungile is someone who's very hands on the ground, someone who is a now person. If something happens, we need to do it now. I'm a planner. I want things to be done in a certain way. There must be a schedule. And I use technology as, as uh, a tool where he uses his, his manpower, his strength, and you know, being on the ground as a skill. So that kind of clashes sometimes, and we just have to find common ground and compromise. How can we meet each other halfway? So I bring the tech and the brains and the organization to the manpower that he is on the ground. It's a refreshingly different workplace in which to see a young, proudly LGBTQ South African having an impact. And the more unorthodox, the better. I think people have a one dimension perspective of me and they always assume or have assumed that I can't get down and dirty, I can't be something else. I am not one dimensional. I'm, I've got many facets and different dimensions that complete who I am and this is one of them. This is actually the place where, you know, it challenges me to kind of use my creativity. So I'm trying to... <laughs> Modernize this place and give it some color and spark. Right now, we're trying to get this car onto Go. the alignment situation because the engine needs to come out. The dolls are trying to do the things, but oh, like, oh, no, oh, it's giving, it's giving food. what you're not supposed to be expecting yeah. about me, babes, but we're gonna make things yeah, work. Yeah. After this, girl, I need oh, to spa a bit because. <laughs> 
I don't like that you guys are seeing oh, me like this. It's a it's a family, my friend. Well done, dolls. Well done. Lungi seemed as at home embracing a side of his brother's lifestyle, which might surprise some. We are on our way to the spa because, girl, it has been a hectic morning. So I need to kind of come back to what I know. Growing up in Pimville, Soweto, with very little, the brothers are able to enjoy a bit of spoiling in the full knowledge that they've earned every ounce of it. Today, for Lasizwe and his brother, we're going to do a glow boost facial, which is going to give glow to the skin and also treat the skin condition. It's the perfect bonding activity because you are bare, you know, as you can see, you know, you just yourself and there's no clothes, there's no barrier. You, you just get to unwind and relax and speak from the heart. What I enjoy the most, I enjoy his humor. The, the bonding stems from there, that my brother is someone who's very humorous and for a change, there's someone who is, you know, making me laugh because I am usually the one that makes people laugh. Who said taxi bosses aren't above poking a little good-humoured fun at themselves? Having a couple's massage with my brother, it's always refreshing. It's always nice to catch up with him. My brother has tried countless times to inspire me or try to get me into the entertainment space, but eesh, once you're in the public eye, you can't even afford to make a single mistake. It's not my thing. Being in the public eye, what I've learned is you need to find a way to have certain things that are private moments. And my private moments are with my family, with my friends, and my love life is also private. And there's certain things that I keep private to myself because that keeps me humane and keeps that balance. So when I do go into the public eye, I can give that certain percentage to the public and it doesn't feel like I'm losing pieces of myself in the process. Having been named among the Forbes 30 under 30, La Cizue took a year off comedy and now needs to bounce back with a clear new image. So the rebrand is still something that I am still thinking about and how I'm going to do it. I do have a plan on how I'm going to execute it. I'm still testing the waters and seeing what next can I do. Maybe I might just be a rapper, you know. Yo, yo, Manizel, you know, you. <laughs> After the reality star pulled his channel off YouTube, many fans were left asking when he'd return. It's an indefinite answer of me leaving comedy completely. I still think I do have a funny bone. Maybe I'm just giving it a break, you know, putting it on the shelf and archiving it. And if it comes back, it comes back. When La Cizue needs to connect, he heads back home to where he grew up, all for time with the people who raised him, like his sister, Chantel Nkunu. What's for dinner is rats. So we have dumpling, hedgehog fish. We have a braai situation. So we've got bourrevos, we've got some ribs, and then we've got some steak and some chicken. And then for dessert, we're having malva pudding with vanilla ice cream and vanilla custard. No better way for siblings to bond. And happily, they all feel the same way about it. I mean, we all have busy lives and we hardly get time to meet. So when someone's birthday or if someone initiates a, a dinner, we, we pitch, we're there. Oh, Shem, when we're together, it's always nice. When, we, when we're together, there's always that spark. There's always that... You know what? You know what? You know what? Which family doesn't? To his 1.4 million Instagram followers, he is all the entertainment they need. And to Chantel? He's a very sweet person, very passionate, um, very motivational, very inspiring. So I think most of all, like he's the one person that I'd run to whenever I'm feeling down, whenever I'm feeling stressed. He knows exactly what to say. But it did not stop him becoming so depressed that he had a mental breakdown. Now, the man is back to share what he learned. 
In the highlights of my career, I was actually never present in the moment. And this time around, I want to do things differently by being present and allowing what is happening around me to kind of be me in that moment. I sometimes tell my friends that sometimes you must treat your life like a phone. The moment it's, it's jamming or freezing, you switch it off and you switch it on again. So you reset your phone. Treat the same thing with your life. The moment I'm starting to tap into the judgment, I'm starting to feel what people are telling me and it's not true. Take a moment, reset yourself, come back to factory default settings and then go out in the world again. With La Siswe aiming for a million subscribers to his channel by year's end, we're betting he does it in half that time. Just ahead, makeup artist Renee DeVitt turns to makeovers with an epic facelift of the Scarborough Beach Shack. Sponsored by Capitech. A return to the ocean was inevitable for Cape Town-born Renee and her husband Pedro de Witt. Her career as an international makeup artist has also served the greater purpose of helping build their dream place by the sea. Our love for Scarborough started when we started spending weekends here and one day we walked past this house which was a bit ramshackled and full of surfers in and out and we saw this beautiful tree in the back garden and it caught my eye and I still remember saying to my husband, this is the house. If ever I were to buy a house in Scarborough, this would be the house just for the tree. <laughs> The house was on sale just before lockdown. We came to view it. It was a little bit out of our price range, so we kind of forgot about it for two years. And on a weekend out, we decided to just walk past here and pop in. They were cleaning the pool. We did a sneak peek and we contacted the owner via an agent and made them an offer and they accepted. Their daughters, Santia and Catalina, watched as they dived right in, replacing everything from the ground up taking a dark and small series of spaces and throwing them open to the light. So we kept absolutely nothing of the original house other than the foundations, but we kept the floor plan. We just tweaked the rooms a little bit. The vision for the home is just to create a space where my children and my friends and my family could come and relax for the weekend in a beautiful environment that's not too stuffy, it's just very relaxed space. The pizza oven was a no-brainer for Pedro, who co-founded a renowned restaurant group. Then they went Spanish and Moroccan. The aesthetic of the house, in a nutshell, is a little bit of Mediterranean, a little bit of Marrakesh, and a little bit boho. Took things from our travels and just shoved them all in one space. For us, the most important thing is obviously the kids are in the kitchen with us when we're prepping food, that our friends are with us. So every area is centered around the kitchen and it's all open plan. So it's very easy to access the swimming pool, into the kitchen, into the living space and into the dining area. As well as a holiday home, the couple designed this house as a location for photo shoots. And when the day's filming is done, there is one place you will find everybody. In the kitchen, I decided to go for rounded kitchen tops, a lot of raw materials, beautiful marbles, travertine, and solid wood. The reason I chose the rounded theme is because we're obviously a cooking family and we love making pizza, and it's just so much easier rolling pizza on a rounded edge. <laughs> I love a little bit more of an organic shape for this house. The furniture is a mix of pieces from the family's original Casa Sanchia up the west coast with others sourced secondhand on Instagram or from holidays in Bali. I've always loved the idea of sunken lounges like in the 70s. We couldn't quite do that here, but I did a compromise and I did an L shape, which is so lovely because you can do really deep seats with fluffy feather cushions and you can change the cushions up just to make everything look a bit fresher. And it's just something really communal. I'm not really a traditional person when it comes to furnishings. I don't always like to commit to one couch for many years. At least with this, I can chop and change the pillows and make it look new every so often. 
After her years on film and fashion sets, Renee has a fine eye for a photograph and an Achilles heel for cushions. Recently, I visited Marrakesh with my family and dragged them from every carpet shop to market imaginable. And I kept buying these beautiful silk cactus pillows. And my husband teased me. He was like, I'm sure you've got a hundred of those. And surely when I got home, I counted and I had 22. <laughs> and 22 is my lucky number. This is the fifth house the couple have renovated together. Pedro's strengths shining through on the technical side, while Renee handles the design. Though some things they've learnt, you just have to wait for. So I've had my eye on this dining room table for many years. I just couldn't find an entire set, and eventually in lockdown, I managed to find the set with the chairs, and they were immaculate. If the project took 10 months to complete, a fair amount of that was taken up by Mr. and Mrs. DeWitt debating curves versus straight lines. When I initially mentioned to my husband I wanted a lot of curved walls and rounded windows and rounded shelves, he had no idea what I was talking about and it was a little bit of a battle to explain my vision, but I won <laughs> and I'm super happy with how it turned out. The arched shelf insets and window silhouettes lend a Spanish style, while the stairs are rather Greek. The staircase was very interesting. I think we had to knock it down and rebuild it about four times just to get the curve right, but I just felt it needed to be a curved staircase just to work with all the rounded walls. If the house isn't bang on the beachfront, the view from upstairs does get you pretty close to the glory. I wanted to create a communal space where kids, family members, adults can all get together but still have a little bit of privacy. So I decided to put the couches back to back so kids can watch television and we can watch sunset and have sundowners on the balcony. A humble piece of driftwood is all the art you need out here, while the indoors are an equally organic palette of mushroom and putty shades. And this is the master bedroom where my husband and I have our sanctuary, our quiet space. It's the coolest room, the quietest room in the house. I found a reference of a beautiful cupboard that I, I was so obsessed with and we had it custom made. I have another favorite corner in the house, which is a reading nook, but I never read there because my children always sleep there. Another feature in the, the main bedroom that I love is the, the bathroom. It's probably my favorite bathroom in the house. We had the tiles custom colored and made and specifically to a sage green that I just find so calming. The marble tops, everything was custom made and, and it's just such a happy, beautiful bathroom. Welcoming as the bedrooms are, the early dawn and late dusk of a Scarborough summer make the outdoors the place to be. I love waking up in the morning to this beautiful big tree and the sea view and the sound of the ocean. I generally take a walk down to my favorite place or my happy place, which is the garden by the pool, just down the staircase. Being keen surfers, the previous owners saw the ocean as their swimming pool. So this one needed some TLC. The original pool had a very ramshackled wooden decking with lots of splinters, which the children hated. So we just found a very inexpensive long tile and we created a little seating area and also a beautiful wall to showcase all my lovely succulents. All the plants are from friends or have been sustainably picked from the journeys up the west coast, Swartland and Overberg. I have such a love affair with cacti. I've been propagating since I was little. Encouraged by my father, he was an avid gardener. He used to grow beautiful bonsai. And I love the fact that you could just propagate by breaking off a piece of succulent and shuffling in the ground. So this is probably about 10 years worth of collecting. I always drive around with welding gloves in the boots of my car in case I see a beautiful succulent on the side of the road, snap some off and shove them in the ground and hope for the best. <laughs> Renee's plants are a metaphor for herself, having spent much of her career overseas, now rerouting herself in home soil. I love this outdoor area because it's so calm and there's the birds you always hear, the slight ocean sounds, there's always kids running around. It's just the calmest, most peaceful space.
It's close to the ocean for the kids. The kids are all kind of free range in Scarborough and run around in packs. And it's just a very safe, calm, nurturing, wholesome space for children. If I had to do this all over again, uh, would I change a thing? Definitely not. I would leave it exactly as it is. It's just perfection. When the De Vitts get a full for a place, they dive in and usually come up smiling. This beach house getaway already feels like it'll be their forever family holiday home. Coming up, young Lara for Nickirk dives into the pool and returns not with copper coins, but medals of gold. Sponsored by Capitec. This 19-year-old Pretoria swimmer might have spent the last year at home after an appendix operation, heel surgery and lung infection. Instead, she won two Commonwealth Games gold medals. Hi, I'm Lara van Nikark. I'm a professional swimmer and I'm happy to have you spend the day with me. Come on in. Champions need a little more than toast and coffee. I'm going to make my go-to breakfast that I have almost every morning. It consists of eggs, muesli and yogurt and an avo. Eggs because it's good protein. The avo gives me the fat I need and the muesli and yogurt is just the extra carbs to get me going for the day. Being an athlete is very important to eat very balanced and get all the nutrients in for the day, but also eating healthy and not going to a very unhealthy, easy option. I started swimming when I was eight years old and I just really loved the sport since I started. And after breaking my first SA record when I was 12 years old, I think I realized that this is what I want to do for the next few years of my life. Missing out on the 2020 Olympics and watching from home with her mom and family was tough, but Lara kept the faith. My family and friends have always been very supportive, just motivating me when I don't feel like training or when I maybe have a bad day, they just keep me going by telling me to keep the bigger goal in mind. I think my biggest achievement in swimming is definitely the double Commonwealth gold medals that I won last year as well as the silver and bronze I won at the World Champs. In between it all, the new pride of Pretoria had to focus on passing grade 12 and well enough to study at Tuckies. Mission accomplished. She rewarded herself with a gorgeous gift. Now that breakfast is done, I'd like you to meet my best friend, Millie. Maliko. Mini is a um, mixed breed between a golden retriever and a poodle, and she's only six months old now. I got her last year, September. Millie is a best friend. She's always happy when I get home after training, and she just motivates me. I actually got Millie as like a reward after the Commonwealth Games for myself of all the hard work I've put in. When the champ wants to go walk about and get things straight in her mind, here's how she does it. Millie and I go out as often as we can. At the moment, my schedule's really busy, so I'm looking at only once a week. But on the days where we don't go for a walk, I will take her for a swim in my pool at home. She loves being in the water, so I'll throw her some toys and she will go and fetch them. I think that's also really good exercise. I'm still teaching her some tricks, but I have taught her how to sit, give paw and lie down. So we're gonna try that. Millie, sit, sit. And I've taught her how to lie down. I'm studying at the University of Pretoria. The career I'm studying is not anything to do with swimming. I want to be a financial advisor one day. So I balance my studies and swimming just by simply identifying what is more important at the moment. Sometimes I will have swimming that is more important, sometimes studies will be more important. It's just good to identify and then sometimes you have to sacrifice a bit of something for something else. You get times where I have a big competition coming up and I have to focus more on the swimming so I'll rather miss out a bit on the studies than missing swimming. 
With two world championships in July and again in January next year, this is Lara's second home. My training is different every day. Some days we will have a longer session, some days we'll have shorter sprints. I think today will be definitely shorter sprints, but very high intensity. And then tomorrow we'll have recovery. So I spend about 18 hours in the water a week and three hours in the gym because the water is more for the fitness and the threshold and the gym is more just to build some muscle and power. The 15 and the 100 meters breaststroke is definitely my favorite and best event because I'm a peer sprinter and I'm very competitive in those two events internationally and I've just always had peer speed. It's up to coach Eugene De Ponta to direct that speed towards a podium finish at next year's Olympics. Laura's brother and sister actually started swimming with me and she would accompany her mom to the swimming pool every afternoon when the brother and sister were swimming. And she just got more and more inquisitive and started coming closer to the swimming pool every couple of days. And then eventually she started asking me questions all afternoon while her brother and sister were swimming and just kind of got to the point where eventually she just walked up to me one afternoon while her brother and sister were in the pool training and she said, so when are you gonna ask my mom for me to start swimming? And that's kind of where it started. I'm proud of her for many different reasons. She's a very dedicated, disciplined young lady. Uh, she works extremely hard, uh, not just in the pool, but out of the pool. She's gotten herself through matric in a year where she won two gold medals at the Commonwealth Games and two different World Champs medals. So, you know, just for a young lady to have so much poise and to be willing to sacrifice so much and work so hard for what she wants and, and what her goals are, it's easy to be proud of such a person. When the champ kept swimming through icy water thanks to load shedding, Anair Mayer took notice. What's interesting about Lara is she's the only SA swimmer in the club and she's a really good role model to all of us, no matter the age, no matter the gender. Like We all look up to her and now she's dedicated to the sport. I think Lara just has such a high standard that it rubs off on all of us. Just seeing her race the way she does, it makes all of us feel like we have to try a bit harder. And then in terms of training, she's always at her best. You know, she could be having the worst day in the world, but as soon as she gets in this pool, there's a smile on her face. Thank you for spending the day with me. I hope you learned something new. Now I must finish my cool down. See you next time. Sun up or sun down. This is how Lara Fenikirk turns water into gold. Join us again next week with reigning Gauteng lightweight champion Kane Faree as he begins to enjoy the rewards and recognition that come from his extreme approach to training. Whether it's time out at the racetrack with his brother or sharing his dream with family, we walk a mile in the shoes of SA's number one contender. Another feel-good production.